Okay, so welcome everyone to the very first call of Open Life Science 3. I am so, so excited and so happy to have you all here. Um, so first of all, I'm just going to run through a few housekeeping things, um, just since this is our very first call together. Uh, so first of all, thanks to everyone who's joined. Hopefully you have or are signing in in the roll call and also sharing just the icebreaker question where we're asking everyone about their favorite vacation location, which is my new favorite sentence to say. Um, so um, we have a blog post announcing everyone who has joined where there is a link in the shared notes. And this is week two, which is the second week of the program, but the first week where we're all having a collaborative call. Um, so I think now that we're a year into the pandemic, many of us are really comfortable with online calls, but just as a quick reminder, if possible, leave your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. That just helps to prevent the trucks and trains and whatever else it may be, chickens in the background from coming through to interrupt us. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't speak. It just means just unmute when you would like to speak. Um, and you can also use the raise hand function or you can use the bottom right um, chat as well to talk. Any of those are acceptable and fine. And it's always fine to interrupt and to ask questions if you wish to do so, because this is designed as a collaborative and participative call. Um, we have otter.ai. So on the top left of the screen, you can see hopefully where it says live on Otter AI. And what this does is it takes what we are saying and it automatically transcribes it into text. This can make it easier for some people to participate and you can follow along. There are some mistakes occasionally, but it's definitely better than nothing. Um, let me see where else I've got to remind. Right, code of conduct. So um, we really try to encourage a participative and collaborative and empowering and friendly and supportive and inclusive environment. And as part of that, we have some of the rules of behavior that we would expect from people written down. Uh, now, this isn't a long document. Um, this is on page four right now, although it looks like it's about to move on to page five. Um, take a few minutes to look through the Open Life Science Code of Conduct. As a general rule, this is treat one another with respect and with the respect that you'd like to be treated by others. Uh, there is more to it than that. Um, and if at any point you believe that this uh, people have acted in a way that isn't in line with our code of conduct, um, either that you've experienced it yourself or that you've witnessed this behavior happening to someone else, then you can report this. Um, so there is there are two ways to report. One is team at openlifesci.org. That reaches the full organizer team. Um, but we recognize that there are scenarios where you might not want to just uh, reach out to a group of people. So in those cases, you could reach out to one of the organizers individually. Um, I'm getting a little bit of background noise coming through. So I'm just going to do you all. OK, and it's fine to turn mute when you wish to speak later on. That's absolutely fine. Um, so that's all the reporting info our email addresses for how to report if you need to are in right now at the top of page five um we've gone through to recording and transcription right one more thing i think before we properly kick off which is that the transcription that we have through otter.ai doesn't go through to breakout rooms in zoom uh, so the best way to make sure that everyone can participate comfortably is we offer some of our breakout rooms to be spoken and other breakout rooms are written if you prefer to write uh, for communication rather than speaking. Um, so what I would ask to do if possible is in Zoom, in the participants list, if you click on the more button beside your name, then you can actually rename yourself. So if you look at uh, my name and Berenice and Malvika and Emmy's names, you can see that we have W or SW written beside our names. Um, and S is for spoken and W is for written. So if you have a preference, then choose one or the other. If you don't mind, then put both S and W beside your name. They're just This just means that we can sort rooms into spoken, written, or either, depending on your preferences. Um, so I will just pause for like 30 seconds just to give everyone time to do that. This is also a time if you have any really quick questions that you want to ask or if anything I haven't said is clear, it's fine to ask. Hi, I'm not sure if that's options available to me on mobile, um, but I am happy with both. 
That's fine. Yeah. Thanks for uh, that is a good point. I don't know how I would do it on a mobile either. <laughs> but yeah, um, we will ping you if it doesn't happen on your name just to double check, but we can remember that you're fine with both. So thank you. Okay, it looks like most of us now have the W or the SW beside your names, um, which is fantastic. So thank you very much, everyone, for taking the time to do this. Um, oh, and Jessica Sims says for mobile, check participants and select your name. You can then rename yourself there. Um, so hopefully we can get those through as well. Um, so we're going to do a lightning roundtable. Um, so we actually have 40 people in this call and I am so, so happy and excited that we have this many people who are excited and interested in OLS3. But it means that intros are going to have to be lightning boom, 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 really fast if we want to actually get through them and do anything else in the call as well. So we're going to try a format where we're asking for four keywords and four keywords only. Uh, and this is going to need everyone's participation to not make it a half hour paragraph ramble about yourself, um, which I know is lovely to do, but it's just that we don't have the time for everyone to do it. So I'm going to start and I'm going to sort of try and ask everyone, we're going to go in the roll call order. Uh, so who, who has already signed into the roll call will go in that order so you'll know if you're coming next. Um, and if you haven't signed into the roll call, now is a great time to add your name to the bottom so we don't miss you because we don't want to miss anyone. Uh, and if I scroll back on my document, the roll call is starting on page two and running on to page three. Um, so I'll start with myself uh, just so that I can give the demonstration about the four keywords we're looking for. So name location, project name, and most recent hobby. So my name, hey everyone, I actually didn't introduce myself until now, I've just realized I am Yo Yehudi. I am based in the UK. My project name is absolutely open life science. And my most recent hobby is gonna be knitting or crocheting. And with that, I'm gonna pass it on in the roll call order to uh, Berenice, are you here? Yes, I am. So I'm Bernice Batu. I'm based in Freiburg, Germany. Uh, my project name is OLS, Open Life Science. Uh, recent OB, I think, is parenting. I'm not sure if it's OB or not, but yes, that's good. Thanks. Thank you, Berenice. Emmy, over to you. Hi, I'm Emmy. Um, I'm co host with OLS. Um, and I am based in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Um, my recent hobby is hydroponics. Teach me. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, Malvika. Malvika Sharon in London, open life science. And I have been trying to make fresh pasta. That's my new hobby. Sweet. Uh, I hope I say your name right. Is it Michel? M M Michel? Uh, you're muted. Yeah, uh, Michal. Yeah, uh, I'm Michal Ruchka from Brno, Czech Republic. Uh, my current hobby, uh, my hobbies are are uh, uh, completely uh, destroyed due to uh, COVID. Uh, so uh, I'm now trying to find out the ways how to enjoy children and so on. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you so much, uh, Emma Karun. Hello, I'm Emma. Um, I'm based in the UK. Um, I'm a mentor on the Fairer Fightlift project. Um, and my hobbies, well, I'm with Bernice. It's mostly child wrangling because I don't really have time for anything else. Brilliant. Uh, Sarah, birthday. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Sarah. I'm based in London, UK. Uh, my project is an open source service area to boost research in the Turing Institute. And as of today, my new hobbies are being much wiser than I've ever been. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you, Sarah. Marco. Hi, I'm Marco. I'm based in Spain, in Barcelona, and my project is towards Sarah Fidelity Data. And in the last few weeks, I'm trying to do small gardening in the patio. Brilliant. Thank you, Marco. Javier? Hello, uh, I'm Javier. I'm based in Barcelona in Spain, too. And I'm in the same project than Marcos towards failure fighter data. And I would say that my most recent uh, hobby is looking for a postdoc. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, Martina? 
Hi everyone, I'm Martina. I'm based in Frankfurt, Germany, and the title of my project is Evaluating Reproducibility Trends in AI Research Projects. And my most recent hobby is digital drawing. Thank you so much, Martina. Jennifer Miller. Hi, um, Jennifer Miller. My project is an empirical legal study of postdocs. I'm in North Carolina in the US and my most recent hobby is gardening. Fantastic. Uh, Abdul? Hi, my name is Abdul. I'm based in Saudi Arabia. Uh, my product is uh, SKLM documentation enhancement. And uh, my recent hobby is, is to uh, uh, race in online games. So I guess that's, that's what we can do at the Thank you so much, Maya. Um, hi, everyone. I am Maya. I am based in Spain, in um, País Vasco. Um, my project is recombinational, um, which I started last year, and it deals um, with stories and transitions and identity of researcher. And I'm right now, uh, let's say the hobbies, <laughs> re re recreating uh, my own uh, identity and through journaling <laughs> and uh, mindfulness techniques. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Maya. Uh, so I'm worried I might mango your name, but I'm going to give a go. Uh, Fabian? That is pretty good. I've heard much worse. <laughs> I'm Fabienne. I'm a German in Boston right now. Um, I'm a physician scientist and a mother, and that is also my hobby, trying to learn how to be a um, pathologist and mom and make it all work. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Irene. Hi, everyone. My name is Irene or Irene. I'm in Mexico City and my project is Skills for Open Agrobiodiversity Data. And my recent hobby, um, I've been reading a lot of short stories. Thank you so much. And I'll try Irene, is that right? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'll try to remember that for next time. I'm really sorry. Uh, Carla. Hi, I'm Carla. I'm from Barcelona, Spain. I work with Marco, Javi, and Emma on the Ferrer Phytolith project. And my most recent hobby, um, I would say it's probably making puzzles. I bought one this morning, so I guess as new as, as it can be. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love me a good puzzle. Manuel. Hi, I'm Manuel. Uh, I'm based in the UK. Uh, my project's on data standards in chronobiology. Um, and recent hobby is, I guess I've been spending a lot more time with my dog than uh, before the pandemic, which is really good. I bet the dog is really happy. Antonio. Hi, I'm Antonio. I'm working from Portugal. And uh, my project is Mutano 5, a reproducible nanopore pattern pipeline for uh, metaverse coding. And as a hobby, I like to watch TV series and listen to music. Glorious. Thank you. Dario. Hi, I'm Dario. I'm based in Italy in the northern part. And my project is a seeding. And uh, my uh, greatest hobby up to now is uh, being a parent. So I'm parenting and trying to, to match all the other stuff uh, together. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, Robin, how's the internet connection? Um, well, you tell me. Can you hear me? Good. Um, okay, so I'm Robin. I'm in West Cork in the southwest extremity of Ireland. My project is uh, to study the paleoecology of West Cork, uh, the lowland lakes and bogs. And my latest hobby is trying to play uh, Vivaldi violin um, sonatas unsuccessfully so far. Still better than me, I'm sure. Um, Ali Reza. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Ali Reza. Uh, I'm in Freiburg, Germany. Uh, our project is uh, implementing uh, some games to teach citizens uh, metagenomic data analysis. Uh, my uh, recent hobbies is uh, playing chess yeah, these days. Thanks. 
Fantastic. Mishka. Hello, I'm Mishka Nemesh. Uh, I'm based in London, UK. Um, my project is titled Towards an uh, Infrastructure for Open Source um, Online Training in Data Science and AI. So very educational. And my recent hobby is doing handstands, which is a really good thing uh, when you want a desk break. <laughs> Fabulous, Katarina. Uh, hi, I'm Katarina. I'm based in Paris at the um, Center for Research and Interdisciplinarity. Um, my project is on best practices for the online peer production of knowledge in citizen science. And my most recent hobby is uh, oil painting, which is great to spend evenings uh, in France at the moment because we have a curfew starting at six. So, yes. <laughs> I want to see those one day, but all. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Batul Marzouk. I'm based in Saudi. My project is about building an open source community in Saudi Arabia. And my most recent hobby is... Fantastic. Uh, Raina, did I say your name right? Hi, can you repeat? I, I guess that Raina. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm Reina, I'm based in Paris, France. I'm working for the CNRS, which is the National Center of Research. I'm a particle physicist. Uh, my project is called La Conga, which stands for Latin American Alliance for Capacity Building in Advanced Physics. And a hobby, lately I've been learning German. <laughs> Last year I, I get to spend a lot of time in Zurich and I didn't understand a word in the state of what people were saying, so I decided to learn it. Brilliant. Okay, Jess. Hi, uh, I'm Jess Cope uh, from the British Library in the UK. Um, I'm one of the OLS mentors this time around. Uh, and I collect hobbies like other people collect stamps, but uh, often come back to playing with computers and learning new language, new programming languages. Glorious. Ibrahim. Uh, hello, my name is Ibrahim. I work. Uh oh, Ibrahim, I think we've lost you. Let's give him a moment more. With Bayero University, Kano, in Nigeria. Uh, my project is on. My project is on hobby traveling, but now uh, making new network, research network. Beautiful. Um, Ibrahim, you cut out just a little bit. Maybe you just want to put that in chat as well, just so we get the full thing. Um, but okay, thank okay. you so much. Okay. And um, now we have Shamsuddin. And did I say that right? Yeah, sure. Um, so thank you, everyone. Um, Ibrahim and I are colleagues. I'm from Bayer University, Kenya, Nigeria. And of course, I'm um, very happy issues. We have internet issue in Nigeria connectivity. And um, our project is House NLP. And the idea of our sustainability is how can we bring African continent and particularly Southern Nigeria into the global form of uh, doing machine learning or natural language processing with local text or African text. So we are working now towards uh, the first stage for how NLP, which is the language from Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um... Okay, I've lost track of where we are. Okay, Emma Lawrence. Hi, my name is Emma. Um, I'm based in London and the UK, and I work um, on our projects called the Tissue Directory and Coordination Centre. So it's a project of biobanking, and my latest hobby is Netflix. Love me a bit of Netflix. Okie dokie. Uh, Marta? Hi, uh, I'm Marta. I'm based in Madrid, in Spain. The project is called Open Science Ambassadors in Spanish Health Research Institute. And I guess my most recent hobby is taking care of a guinea pig. I just adopted a week ago. I've never had a guinea pig. Um, Irachi? Yes, hello. Uh, I'm Irachi, based in Cambridge, UK. I'm a mentor for a project focused on increasing visibility of research through preprints. And as a hobby, I think I'm going to say that I'm trying to get better at cooking dinner. Thanks to lockdown, I get to cook at home much more than before. 
for better or worse. <laughs> Fantastic, Teresa. I am Teresa. I'm from the University of Freiburg, and um, I'm in the same project as Ali Reza and Masako, which is the uh, an online game for data analysis. And uh, my hobby is and was and will be dancing, I think. <laughs> Thanks. That's really awesome. Uh, Stelios. Uh, so hello. Uh, my name is uh, Stelios. I'm based in uh, Greece. Uh, my current project is uh, designing uh, an infrastructure for sharing AI models for um, uh, doing data science in uh, biomedical data. Um, my hobbies are, um, you know, uh, Linux scripts and uh, olive trees, I would say. Thank you. Brilliant. Uh, Anneli? Hi, y'all. Uh, my name is Anneli Sekulich. I'm from Columbus, Ohio, USA. Um, my project is considered, I'm looking at the social memories and creating a repertoire for people to be able to put their memories into play. I haven't got a catchy name yet, so we're still working on that. Um, and my newest hobby is trying to perfect Claire de Lune on the piano. So that's currently what I'm working on right now. So many musicians, Masako. Hi, I'm Masako, um, based in Germany, Freiburg. Um, our project with Teresa and Ali Risa is implementing a game for data analysis. And my recent hobby is meeting people online. You'll certainly get some of that here. Um, Anshika. Hello everyone, I am Anshika. I am from India and my recent hobby is playing chess. And my mentor is you. I'm very thankful for that. Delighted to have my mentees on the call. Uh, Jessica. Hi, I'm Jessica. Um, I'm based in London and I work with Emma Lawrence on our project, the Tissue Directory and Coordination Center. So it's about biobanking. And recently, my most recent hobby is stop motion animation. I need to see some of these clips. Mehak? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Mehak Chopra, and I'm from India. My I'm in the project, uh, which is system genomic integration of diabetes related genes. And my recent hobby is I've started learning calligraphy and I'm so excited to be part of OLS. Thank you so much. Please share some of your calligraphy. Uh, Mohammed. Oh, hi. Uh, this is Mohammed Sheikh. I'm from Turkey. I participated in OLS2 and uh, I gained so much from uh, OLS2. Uh, it changed lots of things and uh, it gave me new uh, targets, aims. So I wanted to make sure that this OLS stays for a longer time and, you know, like make sure that uh, we have a concrete uh, evidence that the OLS uh, is uh, helping lots of people. So my project is about writing a paper uh, about OLS. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you so much, Mohammed. I think we possibly have our last person, Christine Bloom. Uh, if there's anyone else who hasn't been, had your name called, please just add the name quickly to the end of the thingy, um, uh, the, the roll call. And Christine, over to you. Hello. Um, sorry for being a bit late. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Christine Bloom. I'm, I'm from Basel, Switzerland. Um, I'm working with Manuel Spitzan, I think is also on the call. Uh, on chronobiological data standards and um, my not my latest but currently my one of my most active hobbies is cross-country skiing. Fantastic I have um, Alexander Martinez I know you're calling on the phone so I'm going to try and unmute you. Hi everyone uh, I'm writing my name. Uh, I am Alexander I'm based in Colombia in Caramanga I'm a master's student in computer science and I support Reina in La Conga, La Conga project. And my hobby is typing, typing. 
thank you so much. Um, so I think that was everybody. Um, if anyone hasn't spoken up who would like to now, um, you can either quickly add your name or just unmute and introduce yourself with the four keywords now. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, um, so, yeah, so yeah. would you want can I to please yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dol Sester. Uh, I'm from Nepal. Uh, I'm an undergraduate student uh, doing BSc Biotechnology and my project name is Gyan Nomuna. Uh, that means Gyan is equal to knowledge and Nomuna means model, model of knowledge. We are just preparing one model of knowledge to, uh, we are just focusing to the ruler part of our, of our country, Nepal. Uh, that is practical based knowledge. We are trying from through the Frugal innovation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there anyone else? Okay. Um, if you want to add your introduction in the chat, or if you haven't had the chance yet, that's also good. But we are going to move forwards um, because that was a lot of introductions. And I'm so, so happy with how many people we've just had the chance to hear from. Um, so let me see where we're at. I'm just scrolling down. Oh, Movika, it's over to you. Thanks here. Thanks here for the wonderful icebreaker. I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, all the talks are linked on the post, but you don't need to look at it right now. Also a reminder that these calls are recorded. So if you miss something, you can always come back to it. So official welcome to Open Life Science from my side as well. I'm very excited to have you all on the call and I'll give you a very quick overview of what this program is about and what you will be learning. So you met Bernice uh, and you and me. We are the organizers of this program and we will always have Emmy in the call who will be co-hosting this with us. So as a team, we believe that to be effective, science should be shared openly with others and made freely available. And you're here with us to do similar amount of work that we have planned for you. And we have also done in our program. We're here to share what we have learned and we hope that you will find them useful. The Open Life Science program has been designed to help early stage researcher and potential academic leaders to become open science ambassadors. Maybe this is a bit outdated because we've seen a lot more different varieties of project come into the program and a lot of you are probably not academic or early career researchers, so please don't uh, think that this is very much limited to uh, this definition anymore. So again, we think that science can advance only we share our work with other and not, uh, not gatekeep it or com compete for knowledge that others can benefit from. But often researchers are very skeptical about sharing their work due to their fear of getting scooped, being criticized, or, or not knowing what they can or cannot share. Uh, because often one of the rewards that we have in research is paper, and a lot of papers are tend to be novel. So this novelty often reduces the chances of people sharing work from the beginning as they are developing. In this program, we will discuss how to work openly without becoming scientific vulnerable. What we would like to do is to share information around how you can own the work that you've done, but as, at the same time, be collaborative and open your project for others to come along and work with you. And together we will explore the important concepts in open science and apply them in our work one step at a time. Our cohort calls are organized every second week, but you will have one week breather period where you will have chance to apply the topics that you learn about apply them in your work, talk to your mentors, but also have a chance to talk about those in Slack or on GitHub uh, issue tracker that we will share uh, towards the end of this call. So this is something that is just a reminder because you all know it's a 15 week long mentorship program which ends with a one week of uh, graduation. Uh, with people finishing and sharing about what they have worked on. You will be attending cohort-based training. If you can't attend it, you will be able to access all the notes and videos on YouTube. Um, and you will be able to talk to us a week later in an open office hour 
uh, to discuss any topic that you didn't understand or some clarification might be useful for you. We will also give you lots of assignments and these assignments are not to be judged. So we won't look at it. It's really up to you how you take those assignments and apply them into your works. It's a lot of reflective and experiential learning for you. If you are really, really excited of what, I, what we are teaching you, there are a lot more information out there. And one of the things that Open Life Sciences built upon is Mozilla Open Leadership Principle. And all the materials are online under CC BY. So if you feel that you would like to learn a little bit more, this is something that you can always visit. Um, we will also add the link in the chat for you. The idea of open leadership is that everybody can become open leader because open leaders are people who design, build and empower their projects and communities for understanding, sharing and participation and inclusion. So I would like to show you this table and this table is something you will see quite a lot as we bring expert speakers and they show you different topics. So we go through design, build, empower, and we build for the understanding, sharing and participation and inclusion. So every time we are working and developing certain aspects of our project, we need to think about, am I designing it for people to understand it? Am I designing it that people can share or build upon my work? Is it actually participatory or inclusive? So this is a thought process that we will go one by one, so you don't need to remember it, but this is a principle that we hope you will be able to integrate in everything that you're doing within open science. Again, open science is a huge umbrella term. It can have lots of topic that isn't just restricted to open source software or open access publication, but there is a lot more about open science that you might be interested in. So as you heard, everybody have really diverse ideas. Some of you might want to share data openly, which falls into the term open data. You would like to share your code, which is open source software. Some of you have hardware design, which is open source hardware. Uh, of course, you know about papers and protocol, which can be published in open access. Uh, we also want to encourage you to share your result earlier, which is preprints sharing paper reviews in open reviews. Uh, many of you are working on open education and citizen science, and we would like to bring you all together. So take the opportunity to get to know each other as well, because scientific networking is also a part of open science. Open by design is something we would like you to remember because open by default is not often inclusive or participatory or community led. But when we design them into our project, we can make sure that everything that we are doing is actually built for inclusion and community. So one of the studies in 2012, uh, which had included about 160 tech companies found that the level of strategic intent in openness and not just openness alone correlates with market performance. You can also think about designing openness into your work and it shouldn't be a thoughtless default. This is something that we want to be extremely intentional about. And I think that's what in, is in the core of Open Life Science program. You all are leaders and we believe that with your leadership and your vision combined with what we are teaching in this program, you can achieve a very positive culture change in your community. And we hope you will take the chance to exchange those ideas and thoughts with each other. So with that, I'll stop and I'll um, open the floor for any question that you may have at this point, or you would like to write that in the chat or also notes are okay. Okay, if not, then I will hand it over to Emmy, who will guide you through a breakout room that you will have a chance to talk about. Thank you, Mavika. All right, folks, we're heading into our first breakout rooms. Um, just because this is the first time we want to take it a bit slower and go through um, sort of how this works and um, make sure that you feel safe and comfortable in breakout rooms. Um, so breakout rooms are 
small virtual spaces, which you, we will split you into so you can have smaller group discussion and so that everyone gets a chance to speak and express their opinions um, and thoughts. Um, and so uh, the next set of breakout rooms will be for 10 minutes and we'll have about three people per breakout room. Uh, between the three of you, we'd like you to discuss and share your thoughts on the following questions, which are also on the agenda. So what was your path to OLS, to Open Life Science Program? How did you get into working open? And then last but not least, how has working open affected your leadership? Um, so just a slight reminder that uh, if you haven't already, please put a um, S or a W to indicate your preference for a uh, spoken or written breakout room um, in front of your Zoom uh, name. Um, let us know if you need the uh, instructions for renaming yourselves. Um, we, can, we can tell you in the chat, perhaps. Um, and when you're in the breakout room, uh, if you need help, then please press the ask for help button, which you'll find at the bottom menu bar on, on your Zoom window. So in a moment, um, you'll get a pop-up on your screen and that says uh, the room number that you've been assigned to and there'll be a button to click and then you will be entering the room. And when time is about up, then you get the reminder, I think, um, that you will be pulled out and returning to the main room afterwards. Does that make sense? Did I miss something? That was perfect. Um, I just wanna say the written rooms are room one with Carla Javier Room two has Jez, Masako, and Stelios. Room three has Marco, Martina, and Ibrahim. And room four, Anshika, Antonio, and Manuel. And those are all the written rooms. All the other rooms uh, assume that it is a spoken room. Yes, so in the, in the written rooms, um, you can use the Zoom chat to type your thoughts in the chat. Um, I think we can also, if you'd rather do it on the agenda, I think we can also make a section there to you know for you to put your notes down as well but please do keep them written and writing in the zoom chat won't um share it with everyone it'll just be your room so don't worry about using the zoom chat but that should open right now Did we say what people were doing in the room? Okay, on recording. Right, we're back on recording. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna say everyone, if you have a moment or two, maybe just add some notes or thoughts to the document where we had the breakout room section, if you had any particular thoughts that you'd like to share after your discussions. Um, but we hope it was good and you got to meet and interact a bit with some of your fellow project leads. Um, and I think I'm gonna hop on straight to the next talk just so that we don't overrun. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and desktop to share. Can you all see that? I've got nods. Brilliant. Okay. Right. So I'm going to talk a bit about one tool that we like to use at the very start of the open life science cohorts, which is the open canvas. Um, and so Perhaps if I'm on the right window, um, I'm going to talk about it now. Uh, we're going to ask you to follow up after the call um, because it takes a little while to spend some time thinking about it, but we'll walk through what it is and why it might be useful just right now. Um, so just going back also to the Mozilla's open leadership framework, this is just to remind us we're focusing really specifically on the design element. So if you recall, Malvika was talking about how important it is to design conscious pathways for people to contribute and to be involved in your open science and community projects. Um, so here we're looking really specifically at what, what we can do to, to design these pathways. Um, and this rubric, again, is something we'll see quite often as we're working through um, OLS. And so this time we're talking about ways that we can design our projects to empower understanding, sharing and participation and inclusion really specifically. Um, I'm not gonna to focus too much time on this, but it is really interesting to look through the open leadership framework when you have a minute or two. 
So this is the open canvas and you say, oh no, it's a form filling exercise. It is, but it's a really useful one because it really helps you to um, reflect on what you're doing and where you're going and why. Um, so we're gonna actually drill into what each of these little boxes means and why they're useful. Uh, so we have some sort of examples here so you can refer back to these slides and it sort of gives you some hints about how you might want to fill it out. I'm going to skip forward a little bit and just talk about each of the boxes individually and why we care and why we think they're useful. So first of all, we've divided this into two halves. One is on the left, there is the product and on the right, there is the community. So one is really about the thing that you're offering and the other side, we're talking more about the people who you're involving when you're doing this, because it's never really just about the project that you're working on. It's also always about the people that you're working with as much as anything. Um, so digging into box number one, the problem. Uh, so just if you can print this out, print it. If otherwise, bring it up on Google Slides and fill this out on your computer. But try and write down when you're doing your project, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? So um, for OLS, for example, the problem that we are trying to solve might be that uh, open science is not something that is well known um, and it's not something that's easy. You can't just spring fully form and know how to show, share your work in an effective way. Um, then if we move on to the next thing, what is then your proposed solution? So you know, you know you have a problem, how would you like to fix it? In our case, this was run a 16 week mentorship program to help people learn a bit more and spread the word to others as well. Um, and then how will you know that what you're doing is something that is successful? So what are your key metrics for this? So once again, for OLS, this might be, and it doesn't have to be, well, one example could be, um, OLS is uh, the number of people who have participated in the program. So in OLS 1, we had about 20 projects. And in OLS 3, we have almost 40 projects and over 60 participants. So this is a metric that shows us that we are, in fact, being successful in spreading the word. And then now that you've got an idea of what you want to do and how you want to measure it, uh, the next question is, what resources do you need to build this? And this could be. Um, I need somewhere to put a website. It could be I need people, it, uh, you know, I need their brain power. Maybe I need a coder. Maybe I need someone who's a community manager to help me out. Or maybe I want a designer. There are so many different things that you might need and it really depends on your project. But just try and think if you want to get the, the basics, just the real kickoff, what, what resources do you need to assemble to get there? And now we actually move on to the community side where we start thinking more about those people because one of those resources may in fact be the people. Um, so if you have someone who's contributing to your project, think a bit about who they are and what they might look like. Uh, so again, if I'm thinking about OLS, for example, then some of our contributors might be open science practitioners who are our mentors and our experts and they can actually give advice to other people. Um, I'm going to skip this box and move on to user profiles. So uh, the target audience. So who, who do we want to be using this? Um, so if you're thinking about your project and this is something that you're building so that other people can use it and participate, that's slightly different from contributors because contributors are the people who help you build this. Users are the people who actually use what you've built. And so for OLS, the user profile would be many of you who are here participating as the project leads and the mentees. Um, and then you start thinking a bit about the channels. So now that we know who the people we want to work with are, we say, well, how can we gain them? So for example, for us to get contributors for OLS, a lot of the time our channel was simply email. We used our personal networks and we said, hey, lovely person who we think can be a mentor, can you participate? Um, another one might be Twitter, for example, if you share on social media, um, there may be other ways, depending on what your community is, it might be that you're reaching out to someone local to you or a research network or something else like that. Um, but that was previously for contributor channels, this is again that these are the people who are helping you build what you build and now we're thinking how can what channels do we use if we want to find people who want to learn from what we build who want to participate but not necessarily as a contributor. So gaining new users for OLS I think it, it, a lot of us has been word of mouth, for example, but also people who have participated have then shared it within their networks and we've done things like podcasts and we've done. Um, 
talks and we've done blog posts and we've done social media to try and gain the new users as in the new project leads and the new mentees. Um, so have a think about what your user channels are and how you'd get, gain new users. And this is the community engagement sort of subset of boxes. Um, and finally, now that you've thought about all of these things, think what is the clear message to state what you offer? You know, what, why do people want to, to come to you? What, what is the catch, the exciting thing? And this might be perhaps restating your problem and solution, but in a, in a short and concise sentence. Um, and also just explaining why you're different to others. So I'm trying to think what this would be for OLS. Um, <laughs> probably something about the fact that we are experienced open science practitioners who have uh, been working with community for um, collaboratively for quite a long time. Uh, and that we are able to teach this and pass this on to other people. But again, try and think about what this might mean for your project as well. Um, and so here is an example um, of one that's been filled out with a project in mind where people will get badges for uh, working on open science. So it gives you a bit more of an idea about what it might look tangibly with uh, when it's been applied to a project. Um, again, this, the link to the slides is available on the um, notes document, so you can go back to this and you can view it yourself in your own time. And um, we also have a link so that you can write your own open canvas. Um, and I think this is one of our assignments for the week, which is, um, so it's bit.ly slash OLS dash open dash canvas. Um, and I think that's me. So I am going to stop my share. Are there any really quick questions that anyone might want to ask or anything that I wasn't clear about at this point in time? Um, and it's okay to unmute or to post in chat. Okay, um, I'm going to assume that there aren't any questions at this point. Um, we'll follow up if any more questions do pop in. Uh, so is it Emmy or Malvika? One of you is taking the breakout next. Okay, I think it's arranging the breakouts. Yeah, I've I have arranged breakout room. Yo, it can you explain the breakout room? I just need to get my window back. One second. I minimized everything so that nothing would pop up when I was um <laughs> when I was presenting. Uh, one moment. I can do it quickly. If... Thank you, Emmy. I'm I'm saved. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Okay, you're back in breakout rooms in about one minute. Um, we'd like you to digest what Yo just introduced, um, but also articulate your big idea, vision, or dream that you'd like to achieve by working openly and um, by uh, the way you. We ask you to do that is to think about your project mission or vision. So one sentence description for each um, in the breakout rooms. You'll have five minutes share what you're thinking about and then offer each other feedback on um, your mission and vision that you're thinking about. Doesn't have to be final, doesn't have to be perfect. The point is to share and see if it makes sense. Does that sound kind of clear? What's really, really handy is if it is clear, um, could we get people with thumbs up or if it's not, some thumbs down? We've got thumbs. Amazing. Perfect. All right. Now we're ready. Yeah, I'm going to send everybody in a breakout room. Uh, just need to move one person because a few people dropped to got it. All right. So it's all opening now. Five minutes.
ask about him. Is everything okay? Oh, he's just gone. <laughs> Thank you for the rescue, Emmy. I, I was like, my window was gone. I'd minimized it. And I was having to try and hunt it back down. <laughs> no worries. I can only imagine how difficult it is to run this session, honestly, like with all the participants and trying to get all the objectives done at the same time. Thanks, so thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, we, we try our best. <laughs> all right, folks, um, in the interest of time, I'm going to move right on to road mapping. So I'm just sharing my screen here for a second. Okay, so road maps, I think all of us have some understanding of what it is. So, um, but Let's forget about that for a second and let's let's rethink what we know um, in, in the next sort of 10 minutes or so. So what we'll be doing um, at the end of this call, I believe we will be asking you to create or revise a roadmap for your project. Um, that's only for project leads, that's not for mentors or um, other friends. Uh, but yeah, so in, in the next 10 minutes, let's discover how to use the roadmap to plan our work and um, contribution on our open projects. And we'll also look at some examples. So um, uh, you mentioned uh, that open leaders design and build projects that empower others to collaborate within inclusive communities. Um, road mapping is not only about designing, but more importantly, we'd like to focus on empowering others to collaborate. So, Again, going back to that open leadership framework, which I really suggest you have a look at after this call or in your own time as well. Um, this road mapping is really a tool uh, that we should use in our design processes to, uh, uh, to build a project that really facilitates participation and um, inclusion. So this is really, you'll see that coming through later as well as I break down the roadmap. Um, this is really about um, governance, about how we make decisions, about how we um, want to welcome people into our communities and about project identities and what the project actually is. So um, we want the first step to uh, allow people to uh, empower people to collaborate with us in building our projects is really to create welcoming spaces. So I think that we all want our projects to be welcoming spaces. And to do that, um, there's a couple of like tips here you can see. So make a good first impression um, so that your contributors and yourself, you know that you're in the right place. Explain how um, contributors can get involved in your project. And then also, if you think about it, um, it's really helpful for people to know what's happening at this point and what's coming next. So these are, these are kind of the motivations to include these three different components within the roadmap. So we're going to go through them one by one in the next slides, but first is project summary and welcome, then how to get involved, and then the timeline. Uh, project summary and welcome, it's really important because a lot of people get directed to your roadmap without you know, any context or any prior understandings. You really have to assume that they maybe know nothing about your project beforehand. So I think it's important that we welcome and help orient our visitors so that they understand where they are. Um, it's often nice to have a project summary, for example, to say you know, two, three sentences of what your project is about. And this also helps give a very clear focus uh, for ourselves when we're writing the rest of the roadmap. Oh, just one thing before I moved on. Yeah, you might wanna make that quite welcoming in your own style as well. So, so, you know, you can put emojis, for example, that I like, um, but you have your own tips, I'm sure. The next part is how to get involved. So new contributors may be very enthusiastic and they may want to jump right in, but it doesn't mean that they know how to. So it's really important that we point to parts of the project that they can immediately work on. And then also point to documentation and you know, pages that can help them um, check out, you know, what's what's happening and how they can contribute. And then finally, we get to the timeline. So that's really, yeah, the star of a roadmap. Um, so the timeline is there to help us uh, organize as project leaders to organize our tasks to complete um, 
our projects around the milestones that we will learn to set. And then also to map what we're working on now and what's going to happen next. And you can imagine that if that helps you organize things, then it also helps your contributor understand how your project work time-wise. So uh, milestones, they are significant turning points or events that will help move the project forward. So typically these are, uh, there could be many types of milestones, but typically they are like status goals. So for example, uh, an MVP, so a minimal viable product, like a first release of your project or software or uh, um, open book, whatever you're working on. Um, these could be dates and events. So it, maybe you are taking your project to an open hackathon. You may want to put that down because a lot of work will be done during, around that date and that event. They could also be time frames. So that could be, you know, short term goals, medium term. So maybe it depends on what you're trying to achieve, but maybe what's going to happen two or four, three months down the line and then what's going to what you hope to see in a year, let's say. So you can think about this for your own project, um, discuss this with your mentor and uh, pick one to three milestones for your timeline. And then once you have those milestones, it then makes it easier to break things down even more. So to achieve each of those milestones, it's good to think about what tasks needs to be completed. So you, you can line these up chronologically or just think about the stuff that needs to happen when those milestones, to facilitate those milestones happening. Include information with each of the tasks. So to make it easier for contributors. So for example, what needs to be done, um, pointers as to how you can get started, or the reason why those tasks exist. And those should reinforce your vision. So um, that was a very fast overview of the components of a roadmap. How do we make this open? Um, and that's very much determined by also how you store the roadmap. So um, you can store it in a separate file. So if you're, if folks are familiar already with like GitHub and or GitLab or one of these open um, project platforms, then you may be familiar with like markdown format. So you can have a file called roadmap.md and you, you, will, you can put your uh, roadmap there. Uh, you can put it in a readme file. Again, that's the introduction page that you get in, in these open repositories. Um, you can put it in an issue Again, that's, that's referring to GitHub infrastructure. Um, I'll show you an example in a bit and, uh, or in the projects tab in GitHub. So many, many ways the the idea is that you draft this and you try to make this openly available to everyone who wants to look at it um, and also allow them to maybe give you feedback or, or comments on your work as well. So let's look at one example, uh, this was, very nicely done by Bernice, I think, when all less one happened. <laughs> it's the roadmap for collecting applications for OLS. So you can see at the top is what is OLS? So why are you like, if you have no idea what all of this is, at least the first sentence will let you know that Open Life Science is a mentoring and training program. And then how to get involved. And then a very detailed timeline with the major milestones. So before open applications, when applications open, when applications are closed, and then the task in between. So uh, this is done in the GitHub issue, as we can see here. Um, and yeah, that's what can, it can look like in real life. So there are other examples on the slides as well. If you access the slide later and you can click into them and check them out in more detail. That's that. So um, yeah, we, we hope that you know this is an introduction to empowering you as a project leader. You already have a lot of skills to be a leader, but maybe what we can help each other do is to become more open and open leaders and open science ambassadors. So think about what you'd like to achieve and break that down and turn that into a roadmap. Uh, if you have any questions, I see some activities on the chat. Um, yeah, sorry, there was a lot of, that was a very quick introduction to GitHub. So uh, don't worry, we will go through GitHub. Um, there will be plenty of opportunities to learn more about it. 
um, in the cohort and other future cohorts as well. And of course, your mentors are there to help. Um, if you have any further questions, please feel free to put them in the Zoom chat or on the agenda on page 12, I believe. If I, while we wait, I will pass over to Mavika so that we can <laughs> maybe finish not so far from being on time. Thank you, Emmy. And as you will see, these calls really fly very fast and that's why we have the breakout rooms. Uh, but also just go back on the Slack after the call and discuss all the things that you found exciting you didn't have chance to. I'm going to close by just sharing what you'll be, you will be doing after this call. Um, you will have assignments. When you scroll down the document, you have the section closing assignments. Um, we would like you to choose name for your cohort. Every cohort has a name. Uh, we had first cohort, which was called Open Seats. Second cohort was called Masked Cohort. So if you have some fantastic idea, please add them here. If you don't have idea, but you like someone else's idea, plus add, add plus one. We will continue doing that for a week or two, and then we'll decide um, a name for next cohort call. If you have any more question, you can add them here. But as I said, we are there on Slack. A lot of you are there. Please take opportunity to talk to us, talk to each other. There are quite a lot of assignments. You already heard about uh, the roadmap that Amy was just talking about. We will have one on the open canvas that uh, you was discussing. And then we have a couple of more reflective exercises. And these reflection exercises are for you to understand what your journey would look like in open life science, which would be through this. What is your role as a mentee in the program? And the second was a second one is compare and contrast for your project. You have to think about where you are in the project and what kind of interaction you want to build in your project. So these are two reflective exercises. There is one open canvas, one roadmap. Last thing, which, which is a very, very quick introduction to the GitHub, how we're going to use it in this program. All of you will be able to get an access to this uh, repository, which is OLS3. This is for you. There is something called issue here. And each of you will be asked to create a new issue. And I'm going to show just one quick um, demo. When you create an issue, it asks you to get started. Here you will add your project name. So you will add your project name, whatever your project name is. Um, for example, if I was a part of OLS3, I will write Open Life Science, if that was my project that I was building. And then you will start editing this part, add the project title, add the username. If you don't have a GitHub account, please take a second, well, it's not one second, maybe a minute to create your GitHub account, add the names and start working on it. This is a roadmap for you from our site uh, where we ask you to do something for the week one and week two. So we are in the week two. Once you start doing something, for example, you've created your account, you will add a cross, for example, here. And let me show you how it would look like. Unfortunately, I'll have to delete this issue, but this is how it will look like that. I created something, there are missing information that I'll have to provide. And I can also, for example, go on and check off things that I finished. So it's a very good way for us to share where we are in the project. All of you will be invited to check each other's issue. So this will be one of our places where we'll, we will talk to you. So that's from my side. We have reached the end of the cohort call today. Thank you for joining us. Um, we will probably stick around for another few minutes if you have any questions. But having said that, I'm gonna stop the recording once again. Welcome to OLS. <laughs>